I sit in this really unusual place. I've been at the Business Chronicle for 29 years. I'm an entrepreneur. I run an entrepreneurial business. I run a family business. I run a very successful business because of the quality of the employees that, that work for me and the quality of the product we produce. And the other side of it is I hear from all these businesses around town because we cover them. And what are they saying about you? What are they, what are they saying about millennials? And, and where is this all going? Well, I will tell you that I teach at Mercer, okay? Um, I teach a graduate class in life skills and soft skills, if you will. So I spend a lot of time with young people. My energy comes from young people. It doesn't come from people my age, okay? I understand you, okay? Not just because I teach you, and that's not to say that every professor understands you, okay? But I went back to school two years ago to get my master's degree at the tender age of 60, okay? I did it for a number of reasons. One is to send a message to myself, and that is that bucket list thing. Either you deal with it or you don't. Does everyone know what a bucket list is? Okay? So as you get older, the bucket list becomes more important before you kick the bucket. Okay? So up at the top of my list was graduate school. I have been blessed that I come from a long line of very highly educated people, but I felt inferior that I wanted a master's degree, that I believed in lifelong learning. So I went back to school. I went back to Georgia State. I enrolled with 24, 25-year-olds, okay? And did it for a few reasons. One was the bucket list. Two is I wanted to see if an old man could go with the young folks. Because I don't know anyone who's challenged the brain power of an old person versus a young person. Well, guess what? The old guy can still go. 3.93, I got my master's degree, okay? There's not a young one in the room that I can't get in the ring with. <laughs> I proved it, okay? Forevermore, you can't take that away from me. And equally importantly is I really got to get down with millennials and to understand you at the work level. Not it, I'm older and I'm here and you're there, but I was at that table, it was a cohort group program. I did every bit of the work that they did. Frankly, I did a little more work than they did. And I learned a lot. I learned a lot about you. Uh, one is, you're smart as hell, excuse me. <laughs> it's the smartest group I've ever come across. Okay, you need to know that. The however is, you're all smart, okay? And when it gets down to getting a job in the real world, am I hiring you? Or am I hiring you? And that's a choice that I get to make. So the questions then become, how are you going to differentiate yourself? How are you going to be pulled out of that pack? And how are you going to be the one? If you want to be the one. You may not want to be the one. Okay, but for those of you who want to be the one, you're going to have to differentiate yourself. And what's going to make you different and make you better than the other smart young person sitting right next to you? Okay, here's the big one for you. The demographic shift is happening as we speak. There are now more millennials in the workforce than baby boomers. It just made the turn, okay? Baby boomers are turning 70 years old this year. It's the big number. So the big number is moving toward retirement and you're the group that sits behind that giant number that's retiring. So your opportunity in four to five years is gonna be enormous because supply and demand are going to line up way different than they have before. You're going to have lots of opportunity based on, I think my battery died. Um, you're going to have lots of opportunity based on the fact that companies are really understanding now more than ever that millennials or my workforce of the future, my workforce is not three years away. My workforce is today, tomorrow, next year, and the percentages are going to go up dramatically when you hit really 2020 in Atlanta, in the United States, and around the world. Big shift. So the question becomes, okay, fast forward for yourself five years out and work backwards. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? Because the sky's the limit for you. And I would challenge you to look at things like you've never looked at them before and look at all of your options. If I were young again, 
I'm mentally, I'm a millennial. Okay. <laughs> Physically, I'm not there. But we can go culture. If we want to do culture tonight, I can go with you. Okay? But I'm telling you that I would look at the cool things in this world. You know, social media is not going away. Okay? How versed are you that? Is that a business you may want to go into? Is that something you may want to go work for? Cloud computing is not going away. 3D printing is not going away. Drone technology is not going away. So it doesn't have to be traditional. It doesn't have to be because it's here now, it won't be there. Apps are not going away. They'll be modified and used differently and widgets will be a different conversation. But technology is certainly not going away. And the need for the quality employee is going to become a bigger demand. So your future is bright. You will be able to pay off these loans. Okay? You will. It's, it's happening now. The economy is improving. Back to the first question. There are jobs in this market like they haven't been in seven years. That is not going to change in the next three to four years. So your timing is good. Had this been six, seven years ago, I'd have been in this room singing the blues with you. Okay? Because it wasn't like this. It was going in the tank. It's how many layoffs are we going to have to report today, this week, this month, this year. No one's talking layoffs anymore. Things are not closing anymore. Bankruptcy numbers are way down. Income is going up. So you're in a good position. You're in a real good position. Hotlanta is back. And for those of you who were not born when Hotlanta arrived, if you will, it was about 20 years ago, and Atlanta could do no wrong. Uh, the Olympics came to town. New airport was popping up. Companies are moving here left and right. It was, it was just a wonderful, wonderful economy along the way, um, and everything was grand and glorious. A modern day reincarnation, in my opinion, of Hotlanta is now happening in town. And if you string it all together, you can see that, that this is not make-believe. Let's start with, we've got not one, but two new stadiums being built in Atlanta at this time. And at the end of the day, a lot of it's all about getting a job and getting a good job. So when you've got facilities like that that are coming up that only, don't only employ, but you're talking about tax base, you're talking about other activities coming to town and creating more jobs on top of it, that's a very big deal. If you look pretty much anywhere around town, you see new building, you see cranes, you see ha price of housing starting to really go up. Banks are not failing anymore. They're lending money again. Um, so in terms of the general overall economy, things are in pretty good shape. There are certain industries that are, are booming. Uh, the hospitality industry is booming. They've got not only business this year, but business on the books for the next three years uh, that really put us like almost at a sold out position. Uh, we're looking at bringing a Super Bowl to town when that new stadium is built. The problem we have is there are too many conventions coming to town to book a year for the Super Bowl because there are no hotel rooms for the Super Bowl. That's a great problem to have, it's supply and demand moving forward. So the hospitality industry books four and five and six years out for lots of big conventions, which obviously have a large attachment to employees and more hotels are even being built in town. A new one by the stadium but really by both stadiums. The Falcons will have a, a new hotel by the World Congress Center, and the Braves and their move will have a big hotel out there. So for those young folks in the room that are interested in the hospitality industry, it's going to continue to grow. They're going to continue to be more opportunities. Much the same in other industries like uh, the movie business, the movie and entertainment business. And it's not just making movies in town, and that's way cool, and it's not all about The Walking Dead, but you've got movies going on here in a big way. You've got television shows being produced here in a big way, especially for those who watch Bounce, as an example, an Atlanta-based company, if you will, to all the way down the line to gaming. Gaming is a huge deal to the far end of the spectrum, and you deal with apps. A lot of app development going on, and a lot of app development going on in town. The other part of why Hotlanta is becoming Hotlanta are startups and entrepreneurship. It's a real big deal, and I will tell you straight away that, that half of you students in this room, in any given classroom, have some interest in entrepreneurship. The question is, which one of you has the interest in it, 
and who has declared that interest in it because you're on a different track, if you will, if that's what you want to do and you want to own or run your own business or you want to do your own thing. And, and that's happening. That's never really happened before. And the realities of, of entrepreneurial business is going to be a very big deal. And I don't know how much conversation's taking place down here, but if you want to look at it globally first, because you've got to look at the whole world now. You can't just look at what's happening in Jonesboro. It doesn't work that way anymore. Okay? But globally, the number of entrepreneurs will double in the next five years in this world, as will the number of middle market people, i.e., the mid-market's jumping up, and entrepreneurship is jumping up, and future opportunity is all over the place. Why is this happening? Well, you know, one big reason is access to capital. The average startup of a business in the United States now is $25,000. $25,000 is the average of a startup. So is $25,000 a big deal? Well, for some it is, but you know what? You get 10 people to come together, at $2,500 a piece, there's your startup business. Whether it's crowdfunding, whether it's money from family, whether it's angel investing, whether it's your credit card, a lot of people are looking kind of to do their own thing. And that's a change in the way people do business and the way they operate. And there are a lot of facilities, if you will, around town now that are built for startups. There's a, a startup village in Buckhead called Atlanta Tech Village. They've got about 300 young people in there with a whole bunch of different ideas going on, all looking to make it big, if you will. And as one moves out, another one moves in. There's another one attached to Georgia Tech. There's another one uh, in downtown off of Marietta Street with these villages where young people are gathering, where they're comparing notes, where they're partnering, where they're looking at new ideas, how they're reinventing the world. A lot of dreams are being realized, but it's not for everybody because there's risk involved.